Good morning, everybody. Welcome. This is the Afro Euro Rico 12 live from Jerusalem. I'm so happy to see everybody. Feel free uh, if you're on WhatsApp right now to forward this invite to more people. The more recovery, the merrier. You know, more people bringing God into their day to day life and recovery and, and spreading their light. Um, RICO 12 is a family of recovery resources. You can check us out at RICO12.com. And we've got um, recorded shares. If you'd like to share, I'll put my number in the chat shortly. And you can reach out to me. We uh, invite people with all addictions, all afflictions to share their recovery through the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous and any other fellowship you may be in. Um, If you would like to contribute a seven tradition, you could go to RICO12.com forward slash support. Okay. So sharing with us today on the topic of willingness is Aaron K. And I'm just so excited to hear what Aaron has to say. Um, Aaron will share for about 20, 25 minutes. And then um, a little bit about their story their experience, strength, and hope, and the program they work today. And uh, and then we'll take Q&A, so feel free. Sorry, that's the ambulance in the background. Uh, feel free to put your questions in the chat, and we'll take them at the end. Don't worry, it won't interrupt the flow. We'll just look at them at the end. Welcome, Aaron. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for that introduction, and thank you for inviting me to speak on Rico 12. I've I haven't been around that long, but I have a, a few speakers speaking for RICO 12, and they've all been quite quite magical and quite, well, very good. Um, it's an honour and privilege to be here today speaking here. And so start off, my name is Aaron, and I am an alcoholic with drug addiction, and I'm a very grateful addict very grateful addicts with alcoholism and to quickly qualify myself over the past 30 years plus of drinking and using various substances things progressed with me to a point where I couldn't control when I drank or used where I drank or used and the amount of drink and drugs that I use once I started taking them. And I've tried stopping and those times were very brief and I just couldn't stay stopped. And finally I was separated from the alcohol and drugs on the 24th of May 2023 which like I said, I haven't been around that long. Um, my poison was vodka and crack cocaine and cocaine. And I smoked a lot of cannabis as well, along with various other things, whatever I could get my hands on. So I'm in my 17 months now of sobriety. And I consider myself to be brand new and I want, I'm trying to maintain that attitude of being brand new just so I can keep an open mind and, and keep willing to learn because I have learned a few bits on my way already, but from what I know, I, I know, I know nothing. Um, so today I'm going to speak about the second most important thing in my recovery, which is Willingness, the first most important thing in my recovery is obviously a power greater than me. So the second thing for me is my willingness. And from the very, very start of my recovery, one of the questions asked to me was, was I willing to go to any lengths for victory over drink and drugs? And... I hadn't got a clue what that entailed and what it meant. But obviously I said, yeah, I said, yeah. Um, 
And there's a couple of people on here who know me, and 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 my mind is is a bit warped and it's a bit twisted, and it was this certainly was back then, and and I was thinking, I hope this guy don't want any like sexual favors from me um, or anything like that. But I said yes all the same. I said yeah, I'll go to any lengths. Um, so desperate, and I were in a yeah, I were in a really desperate mess, and things couldn't get much worse for me. And I was kind of just living to drink, and and waiting to die, and that was me. So willingness, or just being willing, this is kind of what it means to me. Just one second, something just popped up on my screen. Need to get rid of that. So willingness, what does it mean to me? And this is what it means to me. So if I am unwilling, I'm I'm in self. And if I'm willing, I'm out of self. And I have to be very careful with that um, in my recovery because when it comes down to those two things, especially the unwilling bit because it was revealed in my step four that I'm lazy, I'm a sloth and I procrastinate and I'll do it now, I'll do it, but I'll do it later kind of attitude. And when I'm in that mode, I'm skating on thin ice and a little example of me skating on thin ice is when I was around six or seven months in, absolutely brand, brand new. And I thought I'd suss this program out. I thought I was Billy Big Shot and I could start cutting corners. And in a very, very short period of time, the program just fell apart. And I were in serious trouble, and I had to ask myself why. And it was because I was trying to find a balance. And the unwilling Aaron wanted that easy, soft way because I'm lazy. I, it, it's in my nature to be lazy. Um, I always want people to do things for me instead of me doing things for them. And I wanted that easier, softer way, and it was a. It wasn't until a guy who was in the fellowship, and somebody reached out to that guy, and this guy reached out to me, and he called me up, and um, and he got me to see reason, and and quite rightly so, and he said to me. Quite bluntly, Aaron, you are a drug addict. You've got severe alcoholism. And for you, there's no middle of the road solution. I need to stop trying to find that balance because the balance will find me. And I need to reset them. I need to press that reset button. And, and go again from now. And do the work, and you will get the result. Uh, results, and if you don't do the work, you won't get the results. Show some willingness, and that was the message. What I got told by a fellow who's got a lot longer in the program than me, a lot longer. And this guy is very good at it, and he shot my ego down into absolute. Flames, it just pounded my ego. And from that moment, I started to show a bit more willingness and action, and then I immediately commenced to get some results. Immediately. And it's a bit like, I say it's a bit like, it's a lot like the faith without works is dead. Because I, I can have all the faith in the world but if I'm not putting the works in, nothing's going to come of it. 
it's just going to be non-existent. Um, my sponsor, my current sponsor said to me, uh, God, God is in the willingness. And um, I didn't, when he first, when he first told me that, I've been working with my current sponsor now since February. And he pounds, pounds into me the, the, the need for willingness. And, like I said, I didn't understand that at first, that God is in the willingness. But but today, I kind of do realise and I do understand what he says because he is, God is. Um, so at the start, um, Mr. Lazy over here, um, I had some difficulty with the word willingness and with, the, with, with what it meant and what I had to do. And... I had a lot of questions and I had to and all the right all the answers were just went against what I believed in and went against the grain. And these questions I was asking myself, they made me feel uncomfortable. And these questions like that like the only lens question. Um am I willing to be willing? These three the three indispensable things. Am I willing to be willing? Am I willing to be honest? Am I willing to keep an open mind? I mean, am I willing to be willing when I'm unwilling? Am I willing to be honest when I'm totally rotten and dishonest? Um, I'm so close-minded. We're willing to open my mind. Am I willing to be kind? All these questions... I'm willing to be patient, tolerant, loving, selfless. And these are all things that went against my grain. And, and then when I look at, when I look at, and on top of that, when I look at the steps, the steps were wrote out on the board. And then when I look at them, I think, really? All of them? Do I have to be willing to do all that? Am I willing to admit defeat in step one? When, even though I know I'm defeated, I've really got to admit that. I've got to be willing to admit that. Am I willing to believe that there's a power greater than me in my step two? And then am I, am I willing to let this higher power, this power greater take over my actions and my thinking? Am I willing to do that? Step four, am I willing to find the truth about myself in my step four. And then in my step five, I'm willing to share that with somebody, else. share it with God. And honestly, I, I and, and admit to myself. And and then in step six and seven, I'm willing to change and I'm willing to get right with God. And then I'm, then I'm in 10, 11 and 12 and I'm, I'm, I'm willing to continue to do all these things and stay close to God and and pass this stuff on. Am I willing to do all that stuff? And I'll tell you now, if I answered yes to all of those questions, I will get what was promised. And I got what was promised. And I got that what it speaks about in the appendix two at the back on the spiritual awakening, the spiritual experience. I said you said yes to all those those things what I've just mentioned, and I did find that I got a profound alteration in the way that I, the way that I think, the way that I feel, the way that I show up in life, and. That was that. That was the. That's what happened to me. And when I'm willing, I'm eager. I'm eager. And this is this is another example of how unwilling I am. I know I know somebody in the fellowship who is thirty years in. She's knows the big big book backwards and forwards. Never mind. 
anything else. She could read that book backwards. She knows how many things are in this book. She knows how many things are in the 12 and 12. And Mr. Unwilling here, <laughs> Mr. Laser, messaged her yesterday. How many times in the big book is the word willingness and willing mentioned? And I got the I got the answer straight back, and it was read it. <laughs> read it. Read the book. Um, she did turn around and tell me the answers to that. Uh, but there's a lot more in the big book in the 12 and 12, where Bill describes the word willingness and willing in different ways, in different terms. Um, but it is mentioned over a hundred times. I found that out yesterday in the big book in the 12 and 12. And it is over mentioned. It's like I say, it's mentioned over a hundred times. Plus more. That's it's over mentioned. It's over mentioned for a reason because it's important. And I can't do without it. And because I'll perish. And um uh, I like the way that Dr. Bob mentions willingness. He calls it zeal. Uh, Wilson likes to call it vigorous action. There's, there's loads of ways it's described. Readiness, um, enthusiasm, and this willingness, it, it clarifies, it clarifies my goodness. It clarifies my Good intentions it, and it gives me and it shows my integrity and when I'm willing um, it kind of prepares me as well and it's it prepares me to accept things what are going to get placed in front of me um, in life and and these things could be good or they could be bad. And I get to deal with these things. And I get to deal with these things with good intentions today. Uh, because I'm willing. And God is in the willingness. And this morning, like every other morning, on awakening, I thank God for giving me that willingness. The willingness to do all this again for another 24 hours and throughout the day I thank him for showing me the willingness because I am lazy um, when I do a kind act I thank God because I'm not like that I am truly not like that and I thank God especially, I especially thank God at night for for granting me that willingness and removing that shortcoming of laziness and and sloth and the procrastination. But I'm not perfect by any means, like I've just said. But with God by my side, and I've got that willingness in me in my heart today. I can um I can continue to grow and that growth comes slowly at times and the more I grow, the more spiritual progress I make. It's got like a knock-on effect for me. Uh, the more I grow, the more fearless I become in life. Um, the more fearless I become, the, the difficulties I face become less difficult. And with willingness in my life, which is God in my life, I can face challenges and I can, and it helps me choose a kind of wiser decision. Um, and that wiser decision isn't me. It's, again, it's God. Um, so the key to this, to the key to this for me, and the key, it's willingness is the key for my program today. And 
that key is it opens the door to where I need to get to, which is contact with my higher power. Simple as that for me. And it's essential for me and my recovery that I keep a tight hold of that key. And if I just sit here with willingness and not putting the action in, it's just it's just a fantasy. It's just a a meaningless fantasy. So today, like yesterday, I so I stay clean and sober by taking certain steps, but I need to be willing to take these certain steps. And if I'm, I mean, if I'm, if I'm unwilling, I know that from from experience, how fast I can fall down that that ladder and come crashing into a heap in the basement. And it was quite a climb to get up that ladder, and. It's so easy to slip off that ladder. Uh, I, I went through a, a similar sort of experience just this year um, in the summer in summer in July, and one of the reasons for because I'm lazy. One of the th reasons why I, why I need to I need it's tiredness. I work a lot. I've got I work a day. I've got a day job and. I had to get up early. I travel around the country to do my job. So I get up early, but I get have to get up even earlier now to, to do my routine, to do my morning devotions and get connected. So the, my day is now very long and I, I, I went to work in London and the first week, everything was fine. The second week, not so fine. The third week, because of the tiredness and some outside issues, my willingness just fell off and my program was in the absolute, I'm going to swear, yeah, it was in the shit. And uh, and then that, that lie started coming back in and telling me that I didn't have an illness. My illness was telling me I didn't have an illness and that I couldn't go and have a drink. Um, so, yeah, the willingness, it's, it's, a, it's a big, big part of my program. And I know it's a big, big part of the, the program in general, which is the three indispensable things. Um, I, what, just going to check the time. Uh, Karen, how long have I got left? Okay. Um, you could chair. You could take about six more minutes, and then okay. we'll take Q and A. Unless you're done, then we'll stop now. No, no, no. I'll I'll just share a bit of our experience. And so when when I first when I first came into this, I was unwilling to admit that I had a a problem with alcohol and other things. Um, it was alcohol what brought me to my knees in the end. And the the hopeless the hopeless situation I faced myself in was that ominous war warning what I got from the doctor. And I knew I had a problem with the drink because I just couldn't leave it alone. Even if I wanted to leave it alone, I just couldn't leave it alone. Um, and when I got the warning off my doctor saying I weren't going to live for very much longer, um, I tried stopping. It lasted three days, and then I drank again because of the my body was shutting down. I was I was vomiting constantly. I'd been vomiting for years, but I was vomiting blood. I was I was passing blood through my urine, and I was. In a, in a complete mess and my liver scan came back very, very in a bad shape and he said I were going to die. I stopped for three days, complete hell, and I drank again. And as soon as I took that first drink, 
hold back in ease and comfort. I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've decided to uh, an alcoholic death. And when I was found in a in a complete mess, I went on a bender to end all benders and all found in a complete mess. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd accepted an alcoholic death and I just wanted to die. I wanted to, this is, I'm not going to have to fight this for much longer. It's all going to be awesome. And um, I was placed in a detox unit and then I was placed in a, in a treatment centre what specialises in 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. And what happened was I went through the steps quickly. I got taken through them quickly and all the torture what I'd faced over and the fighting, the pain and misery what I'd been in over the last God knows how many years. I found to have been removed in the space of six weeks and it absolutely blew my mind. I couldn't understand just by taking a few simple steps that, like it speaks about in the appendix to that, I've mentioned it at the beginning of my share, that profound alteration in life, what came over me, and the, the change in attitude, which I love, I love the step six and seven. I I'm absolutely adore those steps. And um, the whole program encapsulates, this is just kind of, this is just how I look at it. And the whole program encap is encapsulated around those two, six and seven steps. And it, that, Profound alteration in our in my outlook on life and how I show up and how I see things. There's very little wrote on those steps in the book, but there's there's no there isn't any need to write any more about those steps, in my opinion, because the whole program revolves around those steps. It's all about getting change that complete psychic change what I went through. Um, and today I live a happy life. I live a happy sober life. Um, I've got an abundant amount of new friends, and I've got, I've actually got millions of friends around the world who I just haven't met yet. Uh, the fellowship of AA, um, and I'm in another fellowship, CA, um, because of my previous. Ongoings, or should, they're not ongoings in previous stuff. Um, I've just got a brand new life, and and when it says in the book that we're reborn, that is exactly what I've been. I've been reborn. I've got a brand new life today. Um, I've got I've got the things. Whatever the thing, all the things what I lost. It, in my active alcoholism, there's a list, a long, long list of things that I lost. And little by slowly, I'm getting these things back today. Um, most of them I have got back. Um, I'm, I do active service in my AA and my CA groups. Um, I'm sponsored, I'm sponsored by two people. And now I, now I take people through the work and it's a, it's an honour and privilege to pay that debt back, to pass this stuff on. Um, and I am going to, I'm going to leave it on, on that, I think, today. I hope I were, uh, came across, um, well, <laughs> um, I don't get the chance to speak often on, on, um, on the Zoom platform. But I just want to say thank you for having me, Karen. And thank you, everybody who's turned up today.
Thank you, Aaron. Thank you so much. So amazing to see you come and turn over that character defect of laziness and allow God to help you get into willingness one day at a time. And that has brought you, as you said, a whole host of new friends, many of them in person, many of them, millions of them virtual. Um, you're sharing on Zoom, or you might have not done that before. You have been reborn, as the big book says. Yeah. Um, so I'd like everyone to put their questions in the chat. I've got a few, but but I, I really want to hear about what was it that transformed? What was it that helped you get out of laziness? It was like, I want to get into that. I'm kind of the opposite. I kind of tend to get into unmanageability or overdoing stuff and overwhelm. So that's helpful to me if, um, you know, if I have sponsees who are struggling with that character defect. Um, it's quite, it's quite a, sometimes I still, I, I still get it. I still get laser. I still get, and that just comes with being tired. Um, but I can't, on my past experience, I've had I've had two bad experiences where I was just doing the middle of the road, easier, softer methods because of my laziness. And the old Aaron was creeping in, and I was being. I've got a long, long list of the de uh, defects, and all these things started creeping back in. So with the laziness, the laziness and the um, it started bringing a lot of dishonesty back into my program. I wasn't sharing things. I wasn't being honest with, with, with sponsees and I wasn't being honest with myself and I wasn't being honest with my sponsor. And, uh, and then, uh, then I'm keeping secrets and then, then I'm, and then I'm getting poorly. Um, and I was just falling asleep. I'd just been woken up and they were falling back asleep. And it was, um, there's a lot of, there's a, I've had, to, I like to have a lot of quiet time um, away from the hustle and bustle of life. A lot of quiet time to reflect on things. Um, I like to do a lot of reading and, and meditation and those things really helped me with my laziness. And when I don't want to do something, the most important thing for me to do is do it. So when I don't want to pick the phone up to reach out to a newcomer, when I don't want to approach a newcomer in a meeting, when I'm tired, I ask God for the willingness and then I go and do it. I put the action in and then I do it. And then it's amazing how quickly it just disappears so i hope that kind of helps a lot of prayer and uh, what i'm hearing there is doing the next right action which is something we talk a lot about in our big book workbook is is as you know in our step at 11 we're, we're praying for god to show us the way we're always attaching the action to that, right? So in our step four, if you're on step four, if you're a newcomer and you're doing the 12 steps or you've been around for more than a decade, like me and a lot of the old timers on this call and you're doing your daily step tens or, or need to be. And, and don't forget, you could do that every second of the day. Um, so, um, right. So I'm going to, let's say, you know, identify the character defect of laziness, right? And I'm going to ask God to replace that with alacrity, with zeal, with vigorous action, as our big book steps say, say it, of course, the vigorous action. Then I attach an action to that. So it's like, you know, if I'm feeling lazy, you know, if I'm feeling depressed, and then I'm going to ask for God to give me alacrity and, and vigorousness and activity and step in my step. And then I, I'll probably go to Pilates that morning, but I'll want to commit to that. I'm going to go to Pilates. I'm going to go for a walk. You know, if I'm feeling unmanageable and I'm asking God to do manageability and organization, well, I'll fold my laundry. You know, I'll have to, we'll have to attach 
but concrete action to that, you know, if I get really unmanageable, let's say I keep doing more loads of laundry, I have a bunch of kids, and I just do lots of loads of laundry, but I didn't fold the one before, so I have to, the action to get manageable is like, don't do more laundry until you fold it all the laundry that's come out of the dryer already, right? It's like real simple. It's real simple. My Ivy League education, your master's degree, your PhD won't help you with this, right? Because you need God and you need the next right step, the next contrary action, right? Um, talk to us about how you how you do this with um with sponsees, um, how you take people through 12 steps, how you get them to turn over the, the character defects and get them to Oh, good question. Um, I just, I just practice. I just, I don't do things my way. <laughs> that is, that is the uh, my way is is not the right way. The right way is just the way that it's outlined in the book. Um, I. I, I think I'm going to need some more time to ponder on that question, Karen. Um, yeah. Um, well, maybe just talk to us about your work with sponsors a little bit, whatever, whatever's in your heart. Uh, well, I'm currently working with, with three guys. Um, and I, when I, I like to really pound home about uh, the step one, step one, the truth of step one, because that's what it was like for me. I I needed to understand that I am going to drink, and it's not a matter of time. It's not a, a matter of if, it's when, because uh, that's what it was like for me. And just... Pounding that step one truth home about the about the when we, when the doctor's opinion, Doctor Silver speaks about the, the the allergy, and then it moves further on into the, the obsession kind of things, and then the spiritual malady. Um, In the book, there's, I think I think there's around six. The first sixty pages are all dedicated to steps one, two, and three, and the instructions are one hundred and three pages plus the doctor's opinion. So the majority of of the book is trying to pound home that message of the the, the step one powerlessness. Um, if I can convince somebody, or if I can convince somebody through what it says in the book. There's more chance of them taking on board or throwing themselves further into the program, um, taking the rest of the steps, um, getting right, getting right with themselves, getting right with God, and hopefully, hopefully, God willing, they got what I got. Um, I, like I say, I consider myself to be a hopeless alcoholic because I didn't have any hope, but it only seemed that way. It only seemed that way. Um, so working, working with, I mean, I, I'm in a book study with a lady and she's actually on this meeting today. <laughs> and... Hi, Roseanne. And um, I actually referred to something about willingness in my share, and it was regarding you, but it would, it would before uh, that I was unwilling to, to find out how many how many times it was mentioned, willingness and, and the word willing in the in the big book. <laughs> and you just told me to go and read the book. <laughs> just read it yourself, but count it. Um but yeah, it's um, I've got sidetracked there. Working with the the sponsees. If I want what Bill's got, I do what Bill did, and Bill tells us what he did in that big book. It's it's as it's as plain and simple as that. 
um, read the book, identify yourself with it. It was written by a real alcoholic for real alcoholics. Um, and the answers and are there. Really good what they're saying. If you want what Bill had, you got to do what Bill did. And the big book tells us a price had to be paid. Aaron, can you tell us what price did you pay? What price did you pay today to be here? Destruction of self. I had to destroy myself. My self, not myself, myself, everything regarding self, um, destruction of self centeredness, um, self, self pity, self delusion, selfishness. That's the price why I had to pay. Um, I, I mean, if, if, you, if you break, if you take the first if you take the first word, first letter out of the page, it you could also translate it into pitiful and incomprehensible demoralization. And that's another price what I had to pay. I had to be totally and utterly demoralized in life. But now I I know that reaching that point was it give me a gift it give me a gift today i can see that it's given me a gift um i've been pulled back pulled back from the gates of hell i were having cups of tea with devil never mind pulled back from gates of hell like i'm sure we all have um let's say cups of tea probably not a cup of tea probably something worse than that but Yeah, it's that desperation, isn't it? That, 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 that's another gift. Another gift. I've been given loads of gifts today um, through being absolutely demoralised and at death's door. Um, and my, one of my greatest gifts today is the, 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 the life what I led back then. So I can pass on a bit of hope to somebody or hopefully pass on a bit of hope to somebody. Like say I'm brand new. I'm gonna consider myself to stay brand new. So I can keep an open mind and I'm still willing to learn and yeah. Um I hope that helped. I hope that answered a question. I don't know if it did or not. <laughs> yes, yes. Destruction of self self centeredness. See we really change and you really how do you notice it? Or I'll share with you how I notice it. You know, talk to other people, talk to newcomers. They talk so much about, you know, about themselves, about their problems. You know, when we've been around, it's like, I got, you know, I got the podcast, I got this meeting, I got the service. You know, people get more recovered. You know, my sponsee tells me, someone wants me to sponsor them. I'm only on step four. What can I do? You know, they start talking about, them, they, she, you know, another person. It's not all my issues, my drinking, my problems, you know. They really, really start changing that destruction of self, getting interested in others, and a price has to be paid, um, you know. Uh, like, I had to, I was literally on an ambulance ship. I had to get off. I had to tell them I will now be getting off for an hour to do this. You know, like, we have to do things. We have to do things that are weird, but, you know, they're a lot less weird than being crazy or dead. Um, does anyone else have questions? I know Emma made a comment in the chat. Maybe you want to talk about that, struggling between the difference between ADHD and unmanageability and laziness. Uh, yes, I'm a um, recovered alcoholic. Um, yeah, listening, really thank you for, for that share. It's what, you know, I, I needed to hear that about unwillingness. Uh, well, all willingness. I, I always think I'm willing, but I, I don't know if I'm putting the right action in. Um, from unmanageability, I, I, you know, I hit that pause button. But then I think, is it, un, am I doing the right thing? Or is am I going back into laziness? You know, I suffer with, I found out I had ADHD in recovery which made a lot of sense but i i i question am i is it is it my adhd is it procrastination 
or am I just being bloody lazy? I, I know what the answer is, is ask God. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we always answer our own questions on this, don't we? Um, answer, I, you know, ask God. Sometimes I put the answer, you know, sometimes I put the the answer in my head rather than God's answer. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I struggle with that. Am I lazy? Is it ADHD? I think I'm doing the right thing by, you know, working with my own manageability by pressing that pause button. But um, is it is it me taking back my self will because I want to be lazy? Ah, <laughs> what's the answer to that? Oh uh, well, that's the one thing I can't really answer on. Um, um, I'm not qualified to speak about ADHD. I don't, I'm not a medic, or uh, but um, the right answer will come if your own house is in order. Um, so it, yeah, that's that's. I mean, there's another there's another thing. What what Doctor Bob? Is trust God, clean house, um, keep your house in order. Um, I certainly, if I, I, I don't know if you've heard of the the four absolutes. Um. That's a little checklist what I sometimes do on myself if, if it's uh, absolutely unselfish, I think, un, uh, dishonest. Is it absolutely pure? Is it absolute loving? Um, if it doesn't tick every box, then it's it's me and it's me. It's myself doing not not God's work. That's a nice little healthy thing, what I tried to do. I, th I think it, the four absolutes was more the Oxford group. I'm not sure about that. Um, but, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really qualified to speak about the ADHD side of things. Yeah. I do know a lot. And that's people. great. I want you guys to be in the habit of saying that line that Aaron just said, I'm not qualified to speak about ADHD. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a neurologist. I'm not, as the big book says, it properly appointed authority we go to the properly appointed authority and nevertheless aaron and myself are you know if we've been through the 12 steps then we're working with others you know godly ordained sponsors and we could help you with the spiritual malady which says we pray and we ask for the next right actions we pray for god to remove the character defect of disorganization confusion unmanageability right we meditate we do our step 11 we get quiet we ask God for the next intuitive thought or action. So I'm going to be quiet. And sometimes it'll be take a nap. Sometimes it'll be, you know, go to exercise. You know, there's always a next right thought or action. Yeah, thank you, Karen. I mean, I know I've, I've I practiced these things and I've practiced the steps, but I'm very newly qualified on that as well. Yeah, and, and don't forget, you can always ask your sponsor if you're confused. You could always ask your sponsor. Say, you know, you should really ask God first. But if, if, if you're having trouble getting quiet, you know, you should really ask God and meditate. The answers will come, sometimes slowly, sometimes quickly. It will come if you keep at it and if you are sincere, honest, open-minded, and willing. However, you could ask your sponsor, what's the next right thing, you know? If you were to ask me, I'd probably say, can you go for a walk to quiet your mind? Can you go for a run? Um, can you, I know you swim, Emma. Can you get, can you go in for a swim a little bit, a 20 minute swim to get your endorphins kicking? You know, again, I'm not a personal trainer, I'm not a psychiatrist, but just the next right action, right? You're going to pray for that and you're going to ask for that. And you can always, you know, ask someone on your God squad or a sponsor, which is a form of higher power, not the higher power, but something outside of yourself and higher than yourself in that addict moment. Do we have any other questions here in the chat? Um, Brandon is saying that meditation has helped with ADHD. Maybe we'll take that lead and you want to have this be our last point. Can you talk to us about your daily meditation practice? Yeah, my daily meditation practice, it's, I don't, I do silent meditation. I, on awakening, I'm, 
straight into my prayer before I do anything. I'm, 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 I get connected. That is at the at the very very start. It was, oh, do I have to do this? Do I have to do that? And I know that I have to do it, but it got into. I got into the habit of saying the exact same prayers every morning, and 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 it weren't, it weren't until I started mixing it up a little bit and started feeling it more. Um, but my meditation, my meditation is, it it happens, it can happen any time, and it happens throughout the day. Um, I do like to have at least ten minutes quiet time in the morning. Um, but God is in the pause, and my meditation isn't me just sat there listening to some a guided meditation. It's me trying to speak to God and trying to get that two-way conversation going. Um, and I, I think that's what Bill means by meditation. Um, Praying is asking for the direction, and because that's what I do, I ask for God's direction. And then when I sit and meditate, I hopefully receive the answers, and the answers sometimes don't come straight away, but they will come. Um, sooner or later, they will come. It's if I don't get the answers, I don't, I don't. Do the action based on my based on my will. I will be a little bit indecisive until I know what the right thing is. But what was just just speaking about just try to do the next right thing, uh, which is I don't think don't quote me on this, but I don't think that's wrote in the book. Just do the next right thing. Um, I think it's just a slogan. What? somebody's made up but yeah of course well it's in step 11 right we ask for when agitated we pause we ask you know throughout the day we pause when agitated and ask for the next great step or action uh i yeah, paraphrase yeah. but it's in the in step 11. yeah um but again i like to do that against the check checklist so that i so I'm not working on self. I have to ask myself, is it unselfish or is it selfish? Is it loving or is it unloving? Is it honest or is it dishonest? And, or is it pure or is it unpure? Now, if it fails on one of those four things, if it ticks every box, generally I'm working in God's, in God's alignment with God. If it fails on one of those four things, I'm basically relying on myself. So that's decisions get based. My decisions get based on those principles. Amazing. Do we, do, do we have time. any last questions here? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, yeah, not every time, but one step in front of the other. Um, I try to claim spiritual growth, not spiritual perfection. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it there. Cheers. Okay, fantastic. I'm going to have to log off here, Aaron. Um, I'm going to leave you with everyone so you can pray, pray the meeting out. And thank you so much. It has been an honor to have you here today. Thank you for all that you do, and I'm encouraging everyone to share uh, wherever they are and whatever fellowship there and share their recovery all over the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Aaron, go ahead and pray us out. Do you want me to lead us out with a prayer? Yes. So can we just have a moment of silence just to remember why we're here? Um, to remember the still sick and suffering alcoholic and their families. God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and do with me as I will. Believe me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy work. 
这个呢，就是多次之后，就只有我们每个人每次都要找到伙伴，把我打入。The side of his mouth, and he wanted to scream, but the sound never came out. So he reached for the bottle to wash the pain away, 'cause what he wanted so badly was to live a different way. And all. Of his problems and all of his pain, filled up the puddle and rose with the rain. His ship kept on sinking. Bottom of the lake, and he knew for certain that he was just a fake, just a fake. Was a man put his hand by the side of his mouth? Never came out. So he reached for the needle to numb the pain inside. And the truth that he yearned for shriveled up and died. Die.